So pretty much as soon as the gates were locked in October to prevent vehicle access and people getting stuck, and each week through to December 2020, a team of club members worked on removing all the old sanctuary cages from Barker's Lake on the Ringstead complex. From the footage on my head cam here, you can see the old cages on the bottom of the lake that have long since collapsed in on themselves and over time deteriorated in the seriously silted conditions as you can see. In total along the lake there was 11 sets of cages and each set had three cages on them. The cages were originally put in the water back in 2005 when at the time a lot of carp in the water were a lot smaller than they are now providing a sanctuary for them for protection against cormorants. With fish welfare a priority, the mindset now 15 years later, and the fact that the carp are most likely actually outgrown the sanctuaries, is that the sanctuaries provide more of a hazard to the fish kiting around them when being played, or worse still, a tethered fish trapped on a snag line. Okay, so a little footage here taken from the head cam gives you an idea of what it's like working underwater. Uh, water temperature went down to around 7 degrees, and within less than a minute of working on a set of cages visibility was often reduced down to around zero as you can see from the footage sometimes i was working in a complete blackout with the job being done only by feel and touch the view that you have here is exactly the same view as i had the only difference is this is an edited piece of footage whereas in reality each cage took a considerable amount of time to actually recover In order to recover each cage to the surface meant that I had to get a lift bag securely fixed into position and securely where the metal work wouldn't actually break away. Uh, I then had to remove my regulator from my mouth, then fill that lift bag with air until it took the tension, then move myself around the cage literally heaving the metal work and brickwork out of the lake bed. On the surface, club bailiff uh, John Surridge worked on the boat and pulled everything out of the water with me helping him haul it up the side of the boat itself. As you can see here, I'm using my DPV, Diver Propulsion Vehicle, or scooter, as I like to call it, to cruise around the bottom of the lake hunting for cages that were not actually marked with surface buoys, because some of them weren't. Topside, the Ringstead Bailiff team used marker rods to roughly locate where they thought the whereabouts of the cages were. Once we'd found them, John would give me a lift bag and we would start the process all over again of recovering the cages back to the surface. So on the bank side, the rinks the bailiff team of Brett Collins, Craig Dancer, Drew Sullivan, Ricky Stokes, Matt Wheatley and Steve Harper overseen by head bailiff car lines pulled everything out of the boat they removed any sharp hazards and transported everything down to mill cotton from the side of the lake uh, not forgetting mick thompson who turned up with the biscuits and just basically watched so you can see here the tangled metal work that has actually been removed from the lake bed we did find a rig snagged up on one of the cages if you recognize this as yours and it has sentimental value to your life, let us know and we will return it. In many ways, the boys that were in the lake represented a halfway mark, which was on average around about 10 to 12 wraps and worked pretty good for how far to cast in respect if someone was in a swim almost directly opposite to you. More often or not, the cases that people like to actually fish the margins over on the opposite bank to them. Now that the boys are no longer actually there, the team at Ringstead asked that you please respect others fishing around you and consider where you are placing your baits in relation to other anglers' lines. 
more importantly, fish welfare has taken a priority. Hopefully you'll bank one of the superbly conditioned fish that the lake has to offer. 